Hello BookTube, I'm here for a bit of a Friday read. So I've got one thing in the post. Uh, I'd already opened it up um, because it was just in this plastic baggy uh, and I was concerned and it was a bit damaged. Don't know why they do that, but the cost, it, it, it hardly cost me anything. Like uh, it was just under three pounds, I think, with shipping. So, uh, and I just, I mean, but I've been amazed at how people seem to think they can ship something like that. Uh, but with the uh, do with reading, uh, I'd mentioned that I finished the um, Zulu, uh, History of the Zulu War by Saul David um, earlier in the week, uh, Sunday night, Monday morning. Uh, since then, I, well, I don't think I started reading. I was reading just uh, bits and pieces of things, but uh, I started reading um, literally a couple days ago, a short history of the of South Africa there's the jacket uh, it's uh, one uh, a couple others that I purchased that I had read during the 80s and I thought I found them really cheap um, and there's a reason for that they smell a bit musty so whether I'll keep these or not it's why I'm doubtful I'll keep them because of the smell but uh, they will they will do a read um, and as I'm reading it, I remember similar things that I had problematic, uh, that I thought problematic at the time, uh, which I completely forgot, but it is brief. It's too brief. It skims over some things that are much more interesting, and uh, the maps aren't the best. Uh, they're, they're mostly, like, really close up, which is fine, but... Especially when you're talking about movements of people going here to the west of or to the north of, and it's just it's it's a jumble. You can, I I can't keep it straight anyway without without a proper map. Uh, but I'm on a hundred hundred page one hundred and sixty three for chapter ten, um, and it going it goes up to yeah. So basically, it's another hundred pages. So in the next day or two, I'll I'll have that finished. Um, I'd also been reading, uh, Amy at, um, the Dusty Bookshelf and myself are doing a read aloud of Ventures in Book Collecting, uh, by William, uh, William Harris Arnold. And, uh, it was published in 1923 and there is the man himself, uh, and she'll be, well, she has read already the first chapter on Wednesday and posted it. And I'll be uh, reading aloud chapter two on Sunday and then we'll alternate. She'll be doing three on Wednesday and then four and so forth. Uh, she also read the uh, uh, foreword, which was written by Thomas J. Wise, Thomas uh, James Wise, um, who is a very interesting character and if people read uh, these types of books um, there is a huge there was a huge uh, explosion of the kind of stuff late 1800s probably about 1898 um, to about 1930 of these type of books of people collecting uh, discussing their collecting and their uh, book buying and I, I thoroughly enjoy them. Uh, they're a lot of times bombastic and, uh, you know, name dropping and everything. But uh, I, f I find them very interesting. Uh, but this Thomas J. Wise crops up almost in every single book. Uh, I've probably got here about 20 or 30 uh, different ones. And he's he's in every one in, in one shape or form. Uh, but... He's an interesting character, and I'll do a separate video on him. Um, now, other reading that I've done, uh, I got this um, the other day. I think just yesterday in the post is the oldie. I originally only got it because it was uh, well, I'd heard about it, um, and I thought, well, it'd be interesting to take a look. Uh, and there w it popped up with, like, I think three pounds for three issues or three pounds for five issues, something like that. Um, yeah, they're four pounds, 75 each. Uh, I think it's a monthly. Uh, but, uh, this one's, um, 
come yesterday, and there's I've, I've started reading it. There's a few interesting things that I uh, that I'll point out. Uh, first one is uh, Giles Brandreth uh, diary. He he was a um, conservative MP, uh, Manchester possibly or somewhere somewhere in sort of northernish England. Uh, but he's now like he's a writer, uh, broadcaster. Uh, he shows up on a lot of um, uh, Radio Four programs. Like he was on Just a Minute a lot, um, and a few other things. Uh, but he's also written a series of books, six or seven. There might be a seventh one that came out a couple of years ago. Uh, they're the Oscar Wilde mysteries, um, which I thoroughly enjoy. It, it, it's like putting Oscar Wilde in the um, guise of Sherlock Holmes. Uh, but there's all the connections because Oscar Wilde uh, married, um, well, married, uh, um, you know, there's connections between um, Arthur Conan Doyle and Bram Stoker. So uh, they show up as characters as well in there. But I, I thoroughly enjoy them. Uh, but he's he's been around pro promoting uh, his uh, book on jokes, on family jokes. And apparently, while on TV, um, he was sort of in an interview with uh, Eamon Holmes, and he was asked if he had a new joke uh, that he could say. And it was, and he says, you know, uh, he says, I said, I, I'd like to tell uh, tell him about my favorite coronavirus joke, but we'd have to wait 14 days to see whether he got it. Apparently, people were not happy at that. Oh well, uh, but yeah, his his joke book called uh, "What's Black and White and Red All Over," published by Puffin for nine ninety nine. I guess it's out now by the looks of it. Uh, another one was I found interesting. It was only half page, but I, I I'm a sucker for sort of these uh, kind of things. I never really collected them. But I remember having some when I was a kid, I think, uh, but without the boxes, uh, something similar. Uh, the Matchbox. Um, uh, I think what are they 170 uh yeah 175th I think uh size or no 1 to 75 series uh, so I don't know what size they are but anyway um they 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 were in like little boxes that uh, look like match boxes and this guy talks about you know the way they started in the 50s and him saving his pennies to 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 get them and they're worth a lot of money now especially with the boxes uh, and he says they're continued on now, but they're in blister plaques, plastic blister packs. And it's like, they're called matchboxes. I don't know if people connect that, uh, but it sort of defeats the purpose there for me. Um, anyway, let's move on. And there's a... Um, Charles Spencer has written a book about, uh, called The White Ship. And it starts out here, 900 years ago, Prince William Henry I heir drowned in the White Ship disaster leading to civil war. And uh, he goes into sort of a brief history of that, but also sort of why he wrote the book and how it came about. He, um, he was asked at the last minute uh, to fill in for a bit of a lecture that somebody dropped out. So he thought, well, what could he use? And so he, th he thought he'd, he'd, he'd speak about the white ship disaster. And apparently it went over like crazy. It, like people loved it because they just never heard of it before. And he goes into that he, it was always a part of his education and his generation growing up, uh, history in school uh, of that period. Uh, and but then he did it a few other times, and he got the same reaction over and over and over again. Then he went to a boarding school, a private boarding school, that he says had a family connection in the uh, um, uh, the uh, head of history. Uh, you know, asked him what he's going to do, and he says, you know, oh yeah, please do. He says, uh, but we don't actually teach the stewards. Um, so it looks like it's like. You know, they, they teach basically, uh, like he says here, from Henry VIII to Hitler, that's it. Um, so anyway, The White Ship by Charles Spencer, published by William Collins on 17th September, 25 pounds. Um, 
as I say, I'm just sort of slowly going through these. Got a few minutes here and there. They're not long articles. Like, they're a page. Like, there's that, and then there's that, and that's about the length of an article. Um, and this is, um, well, it's called Heavenly Metal, but it's about uh, replacing the iron uh, railings that were taken down during the Second World War in London. And not all of them have been put back up, but uh, uh, this uh, David uh, Sugarman, uh, he started a company in 1960 to sort of replicate them and put them up, and he's been busy ever since, and his son, I think, is taking over, uh, and probably his grandchildren will as well. Um because it says here that the railings were ripped out uh, 40 London squares during the war. And the I, they were the reason for that. And I think a lot of people know this story, and it shows up on films as well, that they they took it for the metal to make munitions. In here, in this article, it, it says something that I wasn't aware of, was that they found that the, it was totally useless uh, for munitions, the metal. So they dumped them, and apparently, possibly in the North Sea. But he he uh, makes replication replicates them and and puts them up, uh, which is interesting. Um, there's an article on steeplechase that I might come back to, and this is uh, about a uh, an article about the Guinness girls, uh, the daughters of um, Ernest Guinness, Arthur Ernest Guinness, uh, the brewer brewer Guinness. Um, in Ireland, and uh, it's, it looks like it's fiction. It's a novel uh, by Emily Hurricane, published by Headline Review. It's twenty pounds, but it just sort of talks a little bit about who they were, daughters, uh, and they had uh, what is it, eight marriages between them, uh, and uh, they were sort of glamorous at the time uh, in the twenties. Uh, heiresses, um, and they, when they married, they each got like a million pounds from their, from daddy, uh, which is equal to like 64, 65 million pounds now. Um, so it just talks about, uh, them, which was kind of interesting because I always sort of had heard of them a little bit and they were just about the right time, I guess, for the sort of 1920s bright young thing. So sort of, uh, tax on to them. Um, the other one, uh, the last one that I read just uh, before I made the uh, video here, which I found interesting, was by Roger Lewis. It's called Poetic Injustice. And he he starts out, uh, one of his favorite films is a film called Hunky Dory, set in southern Wales in the hot summer of 1976. Not familiar with the film at all, but he says that it's, uh, it's about a school putting on a rock music adaptation of The Tempest, and it's about them, you know, grappling with poetry and the language and, and you know, adapting it and things like that. Uh, and he's saying not every, uh, not very many people ever fulfill their promise uh, is the unspoken theme. But putting on a play like that, learning and reciting the verse can be looked back on as a high point in anyone's life when everyone was brave and laughing. Uh, but he talks about too, and, and this comes into the uh, fact that I guess uh, uh, from next year poetry will be dropped as a compulsory topic for the uh, GSC, GCSE uh, pupils. English literature is out of tune with the times, according to the Office of Qualifications and Examinations Regulation. Uh, so, uh, but then he talks about you know like th that. Uh, the instinct to preserve is now an anathema. The past not only means nothing, it has to be reprehended. You do well to commit the flames of the evil spirit of the past. This is strong, great, and symbolic deed. And he quotes, he's quoting Goebbels there. But he says, children don't know things because their teachers don't. I have met teachers who have never heard of Orson Welles or Muriel Spark. They don't read for pleasure or watch black and white movies, and they never stray outside the syllabus. 
the word I use, I'd use is thick. Anyone uh, with talent quickly resigns in despair. Bit heavy there, calling them thick, I suppose. But uh, um, but the, I I I think that is the case. People just don't know um, other other things. They don't want to explore. Uh, they're not exposed to to things. Um, and he says, I was taught by people with real degrees from proper universities. Uh, they knew about history and its context. A properly educated grown-up person would know about opera, films, plays, and the latest books. Uh, and he says, the modern world and the modern heart needs a study of poetry, a knowledge of and feeling for the strength and simplicity of language and the way it can bring back... Uh, sunken sensations to borrow uh, Rilke's uh, phrase. Poetry doesn't mean florid, extraneous or obscure. It gives people a sense of their separate existence which is what the characters experience in the film that he mentions Hunky Dory. Um, so that's as far as I got there. Um, I've been I've been using it as a placeholder which came with this as a, uh, it's a museum selection. I thought it had something to do with the British Museum, but I don't think it is, yeah. Um, it's just a catalog of sort of high-end stuff and some nice, interesting things in here, but, whoa, pricey, yeah, pricey. Like, there's a little sort of uh, bookcase, a swirling, turnable bookcase, uh, and they want, like, 500 and some pounds for it, and it's just, it's like one shelf uh, bookcase that would sit on the table. Uh, it's just, yeah. Interesting, but uh, uh, I don't know what the uh, demographic is for this uh, oldies magazine. Uh, maybe it is for <laughs> that, so I'm I don't fit that for the economic graphic, but I suppose age wise, I do. Uh, I just find uh, quite interesting. There's an insert, a 32 page insert of book reviews as well, so um, that'll be interesting to go through. Uh, what came in the post? Uh, another sort of South African um, Zulu uh, book, uh, Shaka's Children, A History of the Zulu. Uh, as I say, it's a bit rough, but it was, it was I think, less than three pounds of shipping. Um, it's got dinged up during the post, in the post, because of the extremely poor shipping, putting a book, and it's quite heavy book, in, in a baggie. So, and it needs some glue, like the hinge there is... is separating from so it needs some glue at some point to be injected in there uh but yeah so this this that's that's it for my friday reads um do check out on sunday well check out amy's at the dusty bookshelves uh uh first chapter and forward of uh, ventures in book collecting and i will be doing chapter two on sunday i'll leave a link at uh below uh, for Amy's video, I think she said she's going to, once it gets started, doing a playlist, so I'll be adding all that eventually, or try to, but now that I, I'm not using a computer anymore, I'm using my uh, um, uh, phone and uh, tablet, so it's sometimes difficult to, well, I can't copy stuff for some reason off of YouTube for some reason, but I, I think I can copy uh URL URLs so I can add that in, in, in below. Uh, and again, thank you everybody for subscribing, questions, uh, and um, yeah, I'll see you next time, book two.